Welcome to Beyond the Shoots as presented by Parasite Systems. My name is Doug Simcox and I'm your host this evening. We have a very special guest on the phone, Miss Renee Underwood. She's a co-director of Youth Directors out at the International Finals Youth Rodeo that is kicking off tonight, Sunday night. July 7th at 7.30. First round opens up tonight. And according to what Renee is telling me, a big turnout and and uh, a lot going on down there. So, Renee, how are you? Welcome to Beyond the Shoots. I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I am good. Really good to have you with us here tonight. We're so excited for what's happening down there. There's about a week of intense competition. How many contestants do you have coming in that have entered? We have over 800 contestants this year. And all the rodeo events are represented. Of course, we got the bareback bronc, saddle bronc riding, the bull riding. In addition, we've got pole bending and goat tying, tie down calf roping, breakaway roping, cowgirl barrel racing, steer wrestling, and team roping. You got three arenas out there going at the same time. How do you keep it all straight? Well, we've got some really great people that run the announcer stand. We have two announcers that do the three arenas. And then we have youth directors that are in the arenas and then the arena judges and that keep everything straight. How many judges do you have? I mean, two judges per arena? Two judges per arena. Okay, so lots and lots to handle. And as co-director of the youth directors, and my understanding is you've got six youth directors, two per arena. Yes, sir. What, uh, what's your duties like throughout the course of the year? So throughout the year, we do have a winter meeting in January where we have the youth directors come to the international finals rodeo. And at that point, we get to talk to them about what goes on this summer. And then we actually go do things like we go to express ranches and we go to the Western Heritage Museum and just kind of get to know each other. That's kind of our fun time because when those kids get here in the summer we stay pretty hooked up working all the time yeah and they come from what four states your six directors my understanding we've got one from arkansas a couple from indiana one from tennessee and one from louisiana so you're pulling across a lot of the a lot of the united states Right. Actually, it's five states because we states. also have Florida. That's right. You've got Florida representative. Okay, perfect. And the duties of these directors throughout the course of the year, I know they come to the International Finals Rodeo. And, of course, when we talk about the International Finals Youth Rodeo, it is put on, it is sponsored, it is organized by the International Professional Rodeo Association out of uh, Oklahoma City. So big event going on, but what are the duties of these youth directors? It's 12 months out of the year. They started this rodeo 32 years ago, and that was back before social media and all of that. So the idea of the youth directors was to have them go to their home states and bring contestants back just to spread the word so that we could get a lot more contestants to come back. And they did the youth directors instead of doing like a queen. Um, a lot of the rodeos will have like a representative of a queen. And they decided that they would do the youth director program instead of a queen program. Mm -hmm. And then the kids also, when they come back, serve as arena directors. And they're the liaison between the contestants and the judges if there's any issues. Okay, okay. And promoting, too. Correct. <laughs> One of the days this week, they'll get to go to the library with all the little kids. And it's really neat because the kids just think these boys and girls are, you know, so cool because they're swinging ropes. And they usually take a goat tying dummy and we do all kinds of different things. So they, they sign autographs when they go to the library. You bet. You and it, it's a big deal. Okay. And to be chosen, they go through a pretty intense interview process. They do. They So they have to turn in an application, and then we set up interviews. And they we usually have about six to eight judges, and they come in, and they're asked several different questions, and they come with a parent. 
and they go through the interview process and then they're selected through that. Okay. Okay. All right. And final question for we, before we meet some of these directors, how's the weather in Shawnee? Um, well, it's been hot up until today and today we finally got some much needed rain. Unfortunately, um, we got quite a bit of rain today mm -hmm. and it looks like it's probably going to storm here again in the next little bit. So hopefully we will be able to do the rodeo without any delays tonight. You bet. And no doubt the arena has been capped off. So hopefully not picking up a ton of water, <laughs> oh. right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay, good. Three arenas to organize. My goodness, all the personnel and all the things that go on. It's a busy, hectic week for you down there, Renee. It is. And one of the things that I'd like to tell you, too, about this rodeo is it's mostly run by volunteers. Like, we are volunteers that do the youth director program. The people that do camping, they're all volunteers and we have a message and media center and the people that run it are volunteers. Mm -hmm. So most of the, only the paid people are the ones that are like arena judges and that the timers and that kind of stuff. You bet to put on a week like this and host all the kids and their families and everything that goes on. You got to feed a lot of people. You got to have a lot of campsites. Correct. How many volunteers are there that, that come together to put this on not only this week but just the number of volunteers it takes to put on this annual rodeo i would say there's probably well over 200 volunteers that help with this oh wow 32 years international finals youth rodeo shawnee oklahoma excellent well, let's meet some of your youth directors. Who do you have with you there, Renee? Right now, I have Allie Jo Cruz, and here she is. All right, thank you. Thank you, Renee. Hello. Hello, Allie Jo. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I am doing good. I'm doing good. Now, I'm understanding you're responsible for Arena 2. Yes, sir. What goes on in Arena 2? Well, Arena 2 is a breakaway rope and calf rope, and I have a partner his name is Rhett and he does the neck ropes for the calves for the barrier and I open the chute and write down times and penalties oh, for the, wow. each event okay so I'm okay this is a little bit different than what I understood you're working you're yes, pulling sir. you're waiting for the nod you're pulling the chute lever Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. I thought you were just there kind of milling about and taking notes and, you know, mm -hmm. no, you're busy. No, sir. We, we, we work in our arenas, and when we're done with our arenas, we move on to the next one when they need help. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, while you're mainly responsible for arena number two, uh, uh, breakaway roping and tie-down roping and duties, both you and Rhett have duties while you're there. You'll go on and then give a hand to the other arenas when you're not running. So, right, yes, sir. All right. Two rounds every day. First round is 9 o'clock in the morning. Second round, 7.30 in, in the evening. How long will Arena 2 be running, let's say, tonight at 7.30 when this opens up? Usually, so we have a lot of contestants this year. I think we have at least 50 breakaway ropers mm -hmm. and maybe 20 to 30 calf ropers in each performance. So it's going to be a little bit longer than what we're used to. Okay. So we'll be done probably around 9 o'clock. And so 50-plus breakaway ropers are going to go out this evening. Right. What what has to be done to the arena? I mean, every 15 runs, do they drag? Do they do anything like that? No, sir, they drag before every event. So after the breakaway roper, they'll drag for the calf roping. Okay. And breakaway roping, getting hotter and hotter, more competitive than just about any of the other events here recently. What are you expecting to see for some times? Oh, last year we had some great runs. We had great runs all the way from 1.6, but I'm seeing um, those 1.6s and 1.7s coming in. So you're predicting 1.6. You're not going to see a 1.5? I don't know. I think the arena, our arena record is one six. So oh, it is. That's the arena record. It has to be. Yes, yeah, so I think it's going to have to be a real fast run. Okay. Okay. Do that one five. 
Yeah. So, so excellent. 1.6 arena record. So we're going to watch that throughout this week. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Come out of Arkansas. This is your third year doing this. When, yes, sir. Where in Arkansas? Uh, Monticello, Southeast. Monticello. Okay. And what events do you work? I do breakaway roping. So not only are you going to be helping out and, and doing the work and the liaison between the pro rodeo officials and all that, but you're also going to be out. When are you out? Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Okay. So back to back. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. And give us the name of your horse, if you would, please. Blackie. Blackie. Okay. Yes, and how's Blackie doing? Is he ready to run? Yes, sir. He is. We've been practicing for this, so he's ready to go. And how old? He is 18. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So, been going down the road a bit. Excellent. Yes, sir. Excellent. He has. All right. Well, excellent. What other duties, you know, pulling the lever at, at everything? You're going to go to the library, I understand, meet some young folks throughout the course of the week. Yes, sir. And any uh, other duties you get to go out to you? I'll right. the... oh, go ahead. Other than that, we do uh, radio interviews. Nice. And we go around trying to recruit youth directors for next year. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And, yes, sir. Okay. Excellent. Well, this has been great, Allie Joe, and I really appreciate you giving us some time. Okay. And I'm hoping we can talk a little bit later this week. You can bring us up to speed, maybe after the first round or something like that. Tell us yes, what's sir, going on. Okay, perfect. Well, we look forward to 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 hearing from you and good okay. luck on your roping Tuesday evening. You kick it off first round, which is actually the end of the first round, right? Tuesday? Yes, sir. All it right. is. So, so the best always runs last. That's what I've always right. heard. Right. Okay. Yes, you got it right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Allie Joe, and have fun. Thank and you so much. Thank you for everything you're doing there to help put on this great rodeo. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you, Allie Joe. One of the things I wanted to tell you about Christy, she she is not right here right now, but Christy actually competed in this rodeo when it first started here, and she started out carrying flags. Christy is the other one that is the co-director. And so she's been a volunteer every year since it started. <laughs> but she's not there with you right now. No, I don't know where she actually went. <laughs> We're just sitting at, we have a, so all of the youth directors camp together. And so we like just have a tree that we hang out under and we just finished eating lunch okay. all together and stuff. So oh, excellent. Excellent. And there's a lot to that. I mean, it's a family environment, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Excellent. And so Christy was at the first rodeo. She carried flags and she competed. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. And yeah. yourself, uh, any competition or anything? Just to... um, not here. No. Oh. Um, I've been, I've probably volunteered, uh, like twenty years. Oh, wow! Excellent, excellent. We have joining beyond the shoots with us here tonight, Miss Ryla Bryant. She's out of Florida. This is actually her second year as a youth director. And Ryla, welcome to the show. I'm happy to be here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Where in Florida do you, are you from? I'm from Lakeland, Florida. So it is like right in the middle of the state in between Tampa and Orlando. That's some rodeo country, isn't it? Lakeland? Yes, sir. There used to be a pro rodeo that mm -hmm. went on there every year. It hasn't been the pa past couple of years, but there are a lot of rodeos in the area. Okay. And what events are you working this year? So I am going to be in the rough stock arena. So I will be okay. working... All the bronc riding, saddle bronc, bareback, and then bull riding. And then we also have the pole bending and goat tying in that arena. Okay. Busy arena then. Yes, sir. How many how many goat tires you got in? How many total contestants, more or less? Ooh, I don't know. But I know, <laughs> I don't know the total number, but yeah. I know that we have. So we have Sunday night, yeah. Monday morning, Monday night, and then Tuesday morning and tuesday night and those all have about 25 goat tires so if you do the math okay comes okay. out to quite a bit <laughs> so four rounds four rounds 
Mm -hmm. what you just, just no, there are five rounds. Would you five, five, five rounds? There'd be five. So if I do my math real quick, that's like a hundred and twenty-five contestants. About that, there's a lot. Oh, wow! <laughs> and you do that times two because you're going to run two rounds. Yes, sir. They're going to two I... rounds, and then technically we do eleven rounds because we have the short go. You but got that short one go. We have fifteen in there. <laughs> right. The short go have fifteen. So that's eleven performances. That's a lot of nanny slamming. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. How many goats does it take? You must have like 10,000 goats or something like oh, that. Oh, we have a lot of goats. <laughs> Do you? Because we change them out a lot, so we have a lot of goats. Oh, that's, you would have to have, absolutely. And pole benders. One of yes, my sir. favorite events is pole bending. What, before I do that, though, what kind of times are we going to see in the goat tying this year? In the goat tying? Yeah. I mean, I would say some sevens, possibly a six. Rit possibly a six. So are we talking like a six nine? What do we? What do you? Somewhere in there. Okay. Okay. What is the arena record? I do not know what the arena record is, okay. but I know I would think it'd be somewhere in that six second range. Okay, that's excellent. So let's root for a six nine, and uh, yeah. So pole bending. How many poles? Ten. There are six poles. Six poles. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. I remember now. And what kind of times are we going to see on those as well? The faster times will definitely be in the 20s. In the possibly 20s. Possibly 19. Really? Possible 19, you think? Okay. Excellent. And then you're dragging after every 10 runs. How do you typically do it in the pole bending? So it really depends on the weather. Like, Last year, it was unsafe to drag, so last year, or not every round, mm -hmm. but if it is too bad, if it has rained too much, we won't drag. Okay. It's really, like, depending on the safety, and then sometimes we do it every 10, and then some I've seen them sometimes do it every 5. Okay. It just depends on the judge's call for that particular year, that particular go-round. And, so. and what are your duties during the GOAT time? What I'm learning from Allie Joe, you aren't just standing around in the rodeo arena you've got some duties while you're out there what are your duties yes, during so, the pole bending in the pole bending i am setting poles making sure you want to make sure that the right girl ran because they're in order we have like a specific draw so you want to make sure they're running in order and then in the goat tying i have to make sure that we have the right stock meaning like the right goat for the right girl that's about to come and tie and you want to write down whether their goat came untied you have to check with the judges if there's any discrepancies you have to be the liaison between the contestants and the judges so yeah there's a lot going on yeah yeah and with all okay all right and i'm gonna i've got a big question here at the end of all this for you but let's talk a little bit about bareback bronc riding saddle bronc riding bull riding what's your duties there so for those, I'm just pretty much writing down the scores and making sure that the contestants are heard if they have a discrepancy, like they want to go talk to the judges. Because uh, that one, I'm not in the arena for those. I'm standing right, right outside behind the gate. Right, make sure. right, right. <laughs> but for that, I just pretty much make sure that I write down the times or the score. And then if they fell off, I write that down and then talking to them and the judges okay excellent and are you are you competing this year Ryla? so this year i'm going to do the pole bending you are doing the pole bending yes sir and who what's what's the name of your horse uh, his name is harry, harry. i've him for a long time now yeah how old is harry harry is 19 19 okay and how would you describe harry he is a little bay horse, and I've had him for a long time. We have grown up together. He's a really sweet little horse, and he's worked out really good for me in the pole bending. We've been state champions in Florida for high school rodeo the past three years now. Very nice. Very nice. So how's Harry feeling? Did you make the trip out there okay? Yes, sir, he did. He settled in nicely. Okay. All right. Well, that's excellent. And the final big question for you, Rila. Wow. All right. All these skills you're learning, right stock for the right competitor, making sure that the poles are set right, the r proper cowgirl running at the proper time, all that sort of thing, and then representing the, the rough stock riders for all the things they need. What kind of skills are you learning, and what are you going to do after you graduate from high school? What's your career path? 
So as far as skills that we learn, we honestly, we learn a lot. And it's really cool to just get to see how the behind the scenes of rodeo and see what it takes to put on a rodeo because it is a lot of hard work that the contestants sometimes don't realize when you're just showing up to make your run. So it's really cool to see all that. And you really learn good communication and then you make a lot of good connections. And then so eventually like one day I love like the Western industry and all that stuff. So I would love to like continue being a part of rodeo and helping out with all of that. And then I've possibly thought about doing like something with media or something like that in the rodeo field. Well, this is excellent. My goodness. And you've got a great voice and you've answered all of our questions just <laughs> wonderfully. So I'm going to vote media. I'm going to vote vote connections. And you know what? If you run for Congress, I'm going to vote for you. Oh, I'm, I'm, you. I'm just telling you that right now. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, this has been excellent. Good luck yes, this sir. year. Good luck. Have fun. My goodness, you're going to be busy and get Harry all kind of legged up and ready to run. And uh, when are you out with Harry? When? when so are you... I'm actually out tonight and then Friday morning. So the first performance and the last one. Okay. Okay. So Sunday tonight and Friday morning. Excellent. Excellent. Well, good luck. And um, we're going to talk a little bit later this week if that works for you. All right. Perfect. All Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Ryla Bryant out of Lakeland, Florida in Shawnee, Oklahoma. She is a youth director, going to be working arena number three. As we said, the bareback bronc ride and saddle bronc ride and bull ride and got the goat tying, got the pole bending. She's going to be very busy there. And now joining Beyond the Shoots, BTC, we've got Mr. Tatum Roberts, comes out of Louisiana. He's one of the youth directors at this 32nd year of the International Finals Youth Rodeo in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Welcome to the show, Tatum. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You bet. It's good to hear from you. Good to have you on the show. Where are you from, Tatum, in Louisiana? I'm from Natchitoches, Louisiana. It's the oldest town in the louisiana purchase oh really okay all right yes sir nakadishes is my saying that right nakadish nakadish yes sir like uh, that the oldest town in the louisiana purchase yes sir i love that so not only talking rodeo we're educating our listeners to a little bit of history of this great united states so you're going to be working arena number one Yes, sir. Tell me what goes on in arena number one. Where they're going to have team roping, steer wrestling, and barrel racing. Uh, now, this is your first year doing this, Tatum. Yes, sir. What do you... Or second second year at the IFR. Okay. And my first year as youth director. Your first year as Ed's youth director. So, last year you were a competitor. What event did you, or events did you compete in last year? Steer wrestling. Okay. And that's the only event I do. Okay. And you're entered yes, this year as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Steer wrestling. So when are you out? I'm out Tuesday morning and Wednesday evening. And uh, you bring your own dog and horse? Yes, sir. I have my own horse. The name's Bob. I come from South Dakota. Tell us a little bit about Bob. How old is he? What age, personality, all that sort of thing? He's 14. He's got a unique personality. He can act crazy sometimes. He can act normal, civilized, but he gets the job done. And are you going down the road pretty hard right now, in addition to being at the International uh, Finals Youth Rodeo? Are you competing every weekend somewhere? Not really every weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm, after this, I'm going to go back home and I'm going to practice and work a little bit, and then I'm going to come back to Guthrie, Oklahoma, for the uh, – WCRA. Oh, nice. Since Junior World Championship. Oh, wow. We love the WCRA. So back to your arena duties. You're in arena number one, team roping, steer wrestling, cowgirl barrel racing. So what are the duties during the team roping? During the team roping, we're mm -hmm. going to make sure that the right team is going to go. We're going to check the bag numbers. Mm -hmm. We're going to check for penalties like if a broken barrier happens or if a barrier gets hung up on a rope or a mm -hmm. contestant's foot mm -hmm. and we'll also be looking at steers for the final round if some are like 
low headed. They don't run on like someone would like to. Mm-hmm. We'll ride them down and make sure they don't end up in the final round. Okay, okay. So you're looking for the ones you definitely don't want in the final round, but yes, also sir. for the ones you do, and you have a voice in saying, "Hey, we'd like you know these." 15 back into the final round on uh, on Friday evening? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And what kind of times are we going to see in the team roping, do you think? I'm thinking we're going to see anywhere from the four range up to the, I'd say about nine. It's pretty wide open. Yeah. There's some pretty good boys in it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I know a few boys that are pretty good at rope and that are in it here, and they can put one on them if they okay. need to. Okay, but you think fours, they'll be down in the fours. You'll have a team or two get down there. Yes, sir. Isn't that excellent? Isn't that excellent? Absolutely. And steer wrestling, what's your duties and what kind of times are we going to see there? I'm hoping for just clean runs, but mm-hmm. we're going to see, we'll see from three seconds up to five sixes it, mm-hmm. this pin of steers that jay miller brought is pretty even pin of steers they've been to plenty of rodeos around and we've run them a bunch we run some in vegas we run some of these jackpots around texas and i know they're going to be pretty good pin of steers and as a youth director i'm going to be looking for if the if the right person is in the box and if the say if a steer sets up he's he doesn't really run on if he a low headed steer. He's mm-hmm. not that good of a steer. Well, I'll ride him down and make, tell JJ to make sure he doesn't get back in the championship round. But just make sure everything goes as planned. That we have a pretty even rodeo, even field for all the contestants. That's excellent. That's excellent. Wonderful. And are you going to be doing any duties like putting neck ropes on or pulling levers or anything like that? If need be, I will. They told me we may or may not be doing it, but I, if I have to, I'll, I could do it all by myself. Yeah, you know how to do it is what I'm hearing. Yes, sir. Okay. And the Cowgirls Barrel Racing, how many contestants do you know? Uh, a couple hundred, I think. Really? 200 plus. And what are your duties during the barrel racing? We're going to be setting barrels, uh making sure no cowgirls slip down and get hurt, um, making sure the ground's pretty even around the barrels, make sure that the right girl is up to go, and just make sure it's an even playing field for all the cowgirls. I love that. I love that. I keep hearing that from you, even playing field. I like hearing that, you know, that you're focused on that. That is excellent. Yes. That is excellent. So you've got a busy week. I mean, you've got two-a-day performances open up tonight, run all the way through the finals on Friday night. You're competing on your own. So between competing and all the arena duties that you have, how do you stay focused? What's the game plan for the week, Tatum? Well, it (laughs) never leaves my mind from when I leave the house going to a rodeo or when I go to sleep. I always think just keep bulldog and do what you're taught and just stay on top of your game and know your game just stay focused really just stay driven and just accomplish what you know you can do i love it i love it perfect there's a busy week ahead of you and um, yes sir and so get some good sleep right yes sir nutrition it's all about nutrition and yes, sir. And, sure. and make sure you got bob legged up and he's ready to go keep him fully hydrated keep yourself fully hydrated as hot as yes, this sir. is out there so good luck to you and tuesday morning you're gonna be kicking out your first round so put it together so arena number one mr tatum roberts out of naked dish louisiana Na- yes sir did i say that right yes sir when you say <laughs> naked dish, just say it just fast. say it. so d- d- just say it d- Nakedish. Make it sound like it's all together instead of it would be with a D. Nakedish. Just Nakedish. say Nakedish. Nakedish. Yes, there you go. Yeah, just, there you go. It's what I do, Nakedish. It's what I do. Yes, sir. What does Nakedish mean? Nakedish is a, it comes from Indians, Chief Caddo, back way back in the day, had two sons, yeah. and they were fighting. He sent one son 
well now it's like the Texas Louisiana line. One son went 50 miles east and one went 50 miles west. And one town is called Nacogdoches, Texas, uh, and one town is called Nacogdoches, Louisiana. I see. Did so, not know that. Great history. Sure. Thank you for bringing that. It didn't just rodeo. I mean, this we got to have educated young people out there in the world. And Mr. Tatum Roberts out of Louisiana, he's proven that uh, he can bring it. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tatum. Yes, sir. You bet. Thank you. Excellent. Now we'd like to welcome to BTC, Mr. Rhett Turner. He's out of Indiana, and he is a youth director, International Finals Youth Rodeo in Shawnee, Oklahoma, which opens up tonight at 7.30. That's Sunday night for the first round of competition, or the first performance of the first round, I should say. And uh, so welcome to the show, Rhett. Hi. Hey, it's good to have you here. What town, where are you from in Indiana? I'm from Lafayette, Indiana. Isn't there a famous school in Lafayette? Is it Purdue? Yes, yeah, so Purdue's in West Lafayette. <laughs> yeah. So it's just right across the river from us. Okay. So this is your first year uh, as a youth director. And what are you thinking yes, so far? I know you went through the interview process last year. I know you went to the International Finals Rodeo in January. What are you thinking about the duties so far? So far, everything's been really fun. It's been a good experience. Got to meet a lot of people and see a lot more about the behind the scenes of rodeo, less than just the competitor perspective of it. Yeah. What surprised you about that? I've heard that a bit. You know, there's one thing, go, you compete, right? What event do you compete in, Rhett? Uh, the tie down. In tie down. Okay. Yes, sir. And so you're used to rolling in to a rodeo. Pay your entry oh, fees. You you go get your horse legged up. You run when they call you. You you pack your horse up. You head on, and you're on to the next deal. Did I describe that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So as a youth director, learning what goes on behind the scenes is there a lot that goes on? Isn't it pretty simple? Oh no, sir. There's a lot that goes on behind all the background and everything that goes into actually putting the rodeo on. What has surprised you the most? Oh, well, really, I think the main thing that I'm starting to see and discover is how many people it really takes to put on a good rodeo and for everything to go smoothly. You bet. A lot of professionals. You got your announcers. You got your pro rodeo officials. You got one of the best rodeo secretaries in the world, Miss Dana Gans there. Takes all the professionals, but also all the volunteers. And I understand there's 200 plus volunteers. And you are a volunteer as a youth director. And you're going to be working with Ali Joe Cruz in Arena 2. So you're responsible for the breakaway roping and the tie-down roping. What do you expect in here? What, what do you think you're going to see in Arena Number 2 this evening and throughout the week? Competitor-wise? Yeah. Oh, a lot, especially in the breakaway, a lot of fast runs. Okay. And so well, it seems like every year we come here, they get a little bit faster and a little bit faster. Yeah. And I'm understanding that a one six more or less is the arena record. Will we have a new arena record? What's your prediction? I don't know. It'd be, it's hard to be one six. Yeah. But yeah. You but bet. Anybody's going to be one faster than one six. This would be the week to do it. This would be the week to do it. Absolutely. Good ground, good calves. Everything, all the ingredients there. We just need the we just need the great competitors to roll in. Is that kind of where we're sitting? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you have your own horse? Yes, sir. Oh. I have my own horse. And what's the name of your horse, Rhett? Shaq. Shaq. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about Shaq. Shaq is my main calf horse. I just got him a year ago. Mm -hmm. He's easy to get on and go win. Okay. How old is Shaq? He's about 17. 17. And Sir. how tall? How big? He's, I don't know how tall exactly, but he's on the bigger side for calf horses. I'm a pretty big guy myself, so I need a big horse to be under me. Okay, okay. And you've had him a year. And what makes him good for our listeners? What makes a good tie-down calf roping horse? He scores good. When you drop your hand, he goes to the calves hard. He tracks behind him good, and... He pulls and works rope good. Okay. And when's your first out? I'm out tonight and Friday morning. And do you know your calf? What about your draw tonight? I have not drawn calves yet. Oh, so they I'm haven't sure drawn. Have. 
Okay. No, sir, not yet. Okay. They'll they should be drawn here anytime. Okay, excellent. And in, in general, the calves do look. They all look even, and they look pretty good size, and they look like they'll be good calves for this kind of setup. Mm -hmm. And have you been have you been competing quite a bit so far this summer? I have not gone to a lot this summer, but I've been to some. Okay, and you mainly in the Indiana, Illinois area, or what are you doing? Yes, sir. We just finished up our high school rodeo a month ago, so I was going to those, and then I've gone to a couple of IPAs in Indiana and a couple in uh, Illinois. Okay, excellent. And how'd you do in the high school rodeo, Indiana high school rodeo? In the state finals, I won around with second round, missed in the short round, and then ended up fourth by like two there was like a five point gap between first and fourth this okay year. so fourth so you qualified for the national high school finals rodeo then yes sir when i finish up here friday night i'll be headed to rock springs and when do you open up there in rock springs uh, i believe the first round there's sunday night and i rope wednesday okay okay so a lot of going here yes well, sir my goodness Rhett, you've got a lot going on between your rope and this evening and how are you feeling about things going into the evening? I'm feeling good. I'm my horse is working good. I'm been roping good, so I'm pretty confident, and excited to get the first round, man. All right, excellent, great. Well, we're going to cheer you on tonight, and hopefully later this week we can have a conversation, catch up, and uh, you can give me you can give me some of the blows of what's been happening out there. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Rhett Turner, Lafayette, Indiana, competing in the cowboy calf roping. Thank you, Rhett. Thank you for coming on BTC. Thanks for having me. Well, we have a team of Australians here this year. Oh, wow. Which we haven't, because of COVID, mm -hmm. we, they haven't been able to come back since 2019. We have them here. And then one of the really cool things, we have a, a Louisiana, I guess they're all friends down there, but like they feed about a hundred people every night like tonight they made a uh, crawfish at Tufay and there's like tons of people over there and there's oh. I think one family has like 12 kids and another one has several I mean they all have big families but it's they're kind of cool because they they do so much you know they're just super nice and they make all this food for everybody and that's kind of cool. That is so cool. That is so absolutely cool. Yeah. I love hearing those sorts of stories. You know, what I wrote down, as you said, that is food, fellowship, and community is what it sounds like. And that, <laughs> yeah. is, that is absolutely excellent. Well, Renee, I really appreciate you coming on. And I, yeah. one other thing yeah. is our, Christy's husband and my husband also help with the kids. Okay. And what are their names? Your husband's name? My husband is Kurt, and Christy's husband is Brian. And then, like, my kids have both competed at the IFYR. They started out carrying flags, and then they both competed. My daughter was a youth director. And then Christy's kids are just now old enough. What The youngest one is not old enough, but she breakaway ropes. And oh, wow. so they're coming up to do this at a later date. Oh, wow. That is so cool. I love hearing the continuity. So I'll add that to the list of things, right? The continuity. Yeah. yeah, this is so neat. And thank you so much for volunteering and helping to put this great rodeo on 32 yeah. years this year. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yes. All right. And if I can get the Australians, I'll give you a text and see if you're available and we'll try to get them on for you. Absolutely. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. It'd be great to have a bunch of Aussies on here and talking about their experiences out there. That would be cool. Yeah, it's really kind of interesting because they have to come and they borrow horses and saddles and yep. even the breakaway roper that showed up the other day, the girl that brought the horse brought her the rope. So she literally like oh, wow. <laughs> set her stepping up. on. Yeah, set her up. So. Isn't that cool? And that's all part, you know, we talk about that a lot in rodeo, even though it is a competition, cowboys help cowboys, cowgirls help cowgirls. That is just yep, so cool. That's for sure. Okay. Well, Renee, we appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for your service. 20 years at the International Finals Youth Rodeo.
And to our listeners, we hope that you enjoyed this episode of our podcast with Renee Underwood and all the great youth directors that were on with us tonight. If you do, please share it with your friends to make your listening easier. You can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube. Search for Beyond the Shoots and follow us, like us, rate us, give us comments, let us hear from you. And if you like Reels, we've got Reels. Check out our Beyond the Shoots Facebook page and click follow. And a big thank you to Parasite Systems for their support with our podcast. Parasite System is a push button parasitic diagnostic system for pasture animals, your horses, your cattle, your goat, your sheep, your chickens. And now for your companion animals, you can find them at Parasite, as in Sight, S I G H T, systems.com. And we've got a coupon, BTC023, for 50% off your mail in test kits. And a big thank you to the IRA Project Facebook group for all their help and guidance. This is Beyond the Shoots with Renee Underwood. Until next time, this is Doug Simcox. Thank you for listening. <laughs>